Hey, I'm Mike, and we are nearly at the end of the first 3D printer duct showdown, and I wanted to get through the last test as quickly as possible so that we can reveal the finalists, and we're also gonna talk about which duct had to be disqualified from the competition as well. So, stick around. We have the Octo by Wayne Sue. I had some trouble printing this one, no matter what I did with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, the walls in two areas became too thin and were not being printed. So I ended up filling them in with some melted ABS filament and then smoothed them a little bit down to try and close those holes in. This duct has a few interesting design choices as well. Each mouth is pointed slightly off center from the nozzle. It has a diverter as well to help with the balancing. It has a lot of open space around it, which should allow plenty of room for the warmed air to escape. This duct is a little bit restrictive at the mouths. Each of them is only seven millimeters squared. So we're at 28 millimeters squared total overall compared to the 113 on the inlet size. The cross section of each leg is also fairly restrictive as well, which I think could be a problem for this duct. This duct is also sending out air more horizontally and less air is moving down. For the Shuriken, this one was overall quite a bit better than the stock duct with a better shaft and better size as well. For the Benchy, it came in just slightly better than the stock duct. The chimney and the hall were better. The bridges were about the same. For the cliffhanger, overall it came in quite a bit better than the stock duct, with most sides looking pretty good and one of the 5 degree angles looking exceptionally good. For the bridge burst, the overall results were quite good as well, coming in just slightly better than the stock duct. This duct is really restrictive, yet it still performed pretty well, which tells me that the proper placement of air and the evacuation of that warmed air plays a pretty big part in high speed cooling. I would like to see this one opened up a little bit more on the mouse and the entire length of each leg as well. And of course the wall thickness needs to be adjusted also. Next up we have the turret by Need It Make It. That is me. Originally I wanted to try and find a way to send air from only one side at a time and have each side timed to the other so that air would go back and forth rather than fighting itself. Unfortunately, I never actually got past the prototype stage. Before gluing the turrets on, I removed the internal impellers, which also had little tiny bearings in them as well. So these are just hollow. What this duct does have that might actually help it perform is that it has lots of room for air to escape. I've also offset each of the nozzles or the mouths from each other slightly so that we have a bit of turbulence just below the nozzle, but around the nozzle air can escape really easily. I also want to see if I can bring that air really close to the nozzle as well. So that fast moving air from the mouths won't slow down very much by the time it reaches the center. This duct comes down really low and sends air nearly horizontally as well. I've also restricted the flow, but only add the mouths down to a total of 58 millimeters squared. So quite a bit less than the inlet of 113 millimeters squared. The shuriken came out really well. Each side was fairly uniform with the back and the right sides looking just slightly better. Overall, quite a bit better than the stock duct. The benchy also turned out pretty well with the bridges and the chimney being really good. The hull is also good, but not great. Overall, again, quite a bit better than the stock duct. Again, the cliffhanger turned out really well. Unfortunately, I did not let the adhesive set long enough and one of the turrets blew off and it collided with one of the sides. I let the print finish and even with that, it still looks pretty good. The rear one looks the best, but overall, again, quite a bit better than the stock duct. And for the bridges, this one came in at about the same as the stock duct. It's not bad, but it's not fantastic. This duct did much better than I expected. I thought it would be really restrictive and it would also create too much of a vortex type of effect. The long-term idea with this concept is that it's meant to be modular. The turrets can either be rotated or they can be replaced to best suit the type of print that we're making. Next up, we have the Laminator by Cyprian. This one appeared in a previous video because I had some trouble printing it. We ended up resolving most of those problems by reprinting it with adaptive layer heights. This one's pretty strange. Like the Cosmic Cupcake UFO, it has a large internal volume feeding into these four mouths, which are then subdivided again into four as well. 
This one seems like it would be very restrictive because it only has a mouth area of 58.4 millimeters squared. And again, that is only at the very tip. This one has these mouths directed slightly off center from the nozzle and they're placing the air fairly close to the nozzle as well. This should result in fairly good cooling. The restriction in this design actually should help to even the flow from each of the sides, but it is still likely that we're gonna see more air coming from the back, less from the sides and even less from the front. For the Shuriken, the sides were very close to the stock duct. However, the shaft was quite a bit better. So overall, a bit better than the stock. For the Benchy, the hull was slightly better. The chimney was also better. The bridges were about the same. Overall, again, better than the stock duct here. For the cliffhanger, the 10 and 15 degree overhangs were better. And two of the five degree overhangs were about the same. Two of them were not as good. So overall here, better than stock as well. For the bridge burst, the results here, again, were slightly better than the stock duct. This one actually did pretty well. It performed better than the stock duct and it still has a lot of potential if the designer can find a way to balance the air coming out a little bit more and also maybe open those mouths up just a little bit more as well. Next up, we have the Borealizer by Jacob. This one is a different take on the wraparound design and it also comes in really close to the nozzle. This one looks a little bit like a fern. The duct has 12 mouths, each with an area of 9.6 millimeters squared, bringing it to 115 millimeters squared, just barely above the inlet size. So this one should be able to take advantage of the supply air with minimal restriction. Each of the mouths is angled off to the side of the nozzle, so we should see some of that cyclonic action as well. But with this duct placing air below the nozzle fairly well and having also fast moving air, it might still be able to perform well even though that vortex didn't seem to work the best in some previous videos. The only concern I really have with this duct is that it won't be very balanced, but that may actually work to its benefit, moving the eye of the storm, so to speak, off the center a little bit. For the Shuriken, three of the four sides are better than the stock duct and the shaft is also better, overall better than stock. For the Benchy, the hull was better, the bridges were a little bit better, and the chimney was also better. Overall, again, better than stock. For the cliffhanger, most of the overhangs were better than stock. Two of the most severe ones were a little bit worse. One was better, and one was about the same. So again, overall, just a little bit better than stock. For the bridge test, the results were close to the stock duct, but not quite as good here. Overall, this was a pretty solid performance. I would like to see how it does with a little bit better balancing, and I'd also like to see the mouse directing air right at the nozzle and not off to one side as well. Next up, we have the Kawoosh by Robotic Potatoes. And this is the first one with only a single screw or a single connection. This is a minimalist design for sure. I'm not sure that on a printer of this speed that that single screw is actually a great idea, but it did make it through all of the tests in one piece at least. This one is the smallest one so far and maybe one of the most restrictive as well with eight mouths each at 4.2 millimeters squared, bringing it to 34 millimeters squared. It's also restricted on the way to each of the mouths because the air needs to pass through each of these very narrow channels. On the other hand, the duct places the air extremely close to the nozzle, so maybe that will make up for it. As for the balancing, we have the passages that come to each side. So we're gonna see a little bit more air coming from the sides. For the Shuriken, we had a very consistent result, but unfortunately none of the sides were quite as good as the stock, and the shaft also suffered quite a bit too, so overall not as good as stock. For the Benchy, the hull and the bridges weren't as good, but the chimney was better, so overall not quite as good as stock here. For the cliffhanger, we have some unexpected results. This little guy was able to produce one of the best sets of overhangs of any of the ducts that I've tested so far. It only struggled a little bit on the left-hand side, but the rest were far better than stock. And it doesn't stop there. The bridge testing also had one of the best overall results for this test. Pretty impressive for such a small duct, which is also very restrictive. It did not do as well on the Shuriken or the Benchy, but it was exceptional for the cliffhanger and for the bridge testing as well. So maybe this one should be opened up a little bit more to let some more of that supplier come through. And lastly, we have the Loud Longhorn Moose Whistler. And I had to read the email he sent me again because it seems like based off of this, that this was a troll submission, but I'm still on the fence based off of the email that he wrote to me. This is literally a whistle that mounts in place of a duct. It is by far the most restrictive duct of, if you can call it a duct, of all of them, coming in at around four millimeters squared overall compared to the supply of 113 millimeters squared. So my first thought is that there is no way that this duct could stand a chance only being able to release a small portion of the supply air. So let's test it to find out. 
So this one lives up to its name and it screams at even 90% fan speed coming in at over 100 decibels, which is enough to cause hearing damage. It is really loud even with hearing protection on. The results of the first test were, well, not that surprising. It isn't really doing much cooling at all. It is just whistling and it came in as the worst performer on this test. This duct is actually dangerous to use and based on the shuriken, it does not supply nearly enough air to have a meaningful impact. So I have had to disqualify this one. I actually wanted to run the rest of the test, but this one is so loud that it can be heard through my shop doors, through the walls and around my neighborhood as well. Yes, it is a very loud whistle, but it is not a good idea for a duct. It is time to finally rank these and that is by best overall and not by specialist. The best ducts have to do well on each of these tests. The most accurate method for ranking I found is to rate each significant part of every single print from one to 10, where 10 is the best result on any of the prints and one is the worst. For the cliffhanger, I rated each overhang on each side individually and then averaged those sides out. Some of the 10 and 15 degree overhangs were great, but some of the five degrees were not. The top six will move on to the finals and to be absolutely sure of the winners, each of them is going to have another opportunity to prove that they are the best. And we're gonna do that by using this little guy by Thermal Master along with a few other simple and hopefully very revealing tests. And I will probably need your help too to make the final call. We had 22 competitors. We disqualified the Moose Whistler, so we ended up with 21. When we total them all, we can finally see which ones came out on top. So we have Ducty McDuckface, the Sweeper, Cuttlefish, Hurricane Quadro, Turret, and Loop X. Now, I did not expect mine to do very well, so if it makes it to the top three, I will still be distributing prizes to the top three submissions from subscribers. Now, if you submitted a duct after the cutoff date of September 10th and it didn't make it into this competition, it can still make it into the next one, but please make sure to keep the sound levels as low as possible. Subscribe and notify to make sure you don't miss the next video and thank you to each of my patrons for supporting this channel and making these videos possible. I really appreciate it. And if you want to help support this channel and you're in the market for some good products that actually last, I have a very short list in the video description there below. Thanks for watching, take care, and we will see you on the next one.